This is my stock barometer. It contains 10 or so components, each of which individually has a good track record of forecasting stocks, but none of which is perfect. When 51% of its components are positive, the barometer gives us an overall bullish reading, and we get a green highlight on the chart, and vice versa. This model, which worked well for 50 years, is significantly influenced by monetary and economic indicators. Obviously, in the last two bear markets, equity prices didn't respond in the normal way to an improving economy in 2001-2002 and declining rates in 2008. In the first case, stocks were in the process of unwinding the tech bubble and in the second to a financial crisis. Now, all of this is pretty obvious in hindsight, but it's better to have a model where we're not looking for justifications for failure after the fact. In that respect, while not perfect, I'm introducing a new model that has stood the test of time in inflationary, deflationary, and periods of crisis. It's based on trend-following intermarket relationships. For example, we use the ratio between stocks and commodities, stocks and bonds, total return between equities and short-term interest rates, as well as the KST, or long-term smooth momentum, for the S&P itself. Since the old barometer worked well for 50 years, I'm not going to abandon it entirely, but in future we use both of them side by side. One advantage of the trend-driven components of the new model is that it's possible to research it all the way back to 1874, and you can see that from this chart. I've been tweaking the components in the last week, and since 1874, when it's been in a bullish mode, the average monthly gain on an annualized basis was 9.97%. And the average loss when it was on a sell signal over the last 140 years or so was 5.98%. When the market was in a secular bear trend, as is now the case, the loss on sell signals moved up to an annualized monthly loss of 10.92%. Gains for buy signals in a secular bear were just over 7%. Its one major flaw is that being trend-based, it's occasionally subject to one- and two-month whipsaw signals. However, if that's the price for avoiding a 1929-32 or a 2007-2008 decline, I consider it to be cheap insurance. This chart shows the barometer in action during the last couple of decades, and you can see that it's called the last two bear markets pretty well. From now on, this new revised barometer will be a continuous feature of our monthly intermarket review publication.